Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're exploring some best method to find information disclosure bugs that count as P1 in bug bounty programs with high impact. Remember, always get proper authorization before testing any website. This is purely for educational purposes. Let's dive in. First, I'll demonstrate the web archive method, which allows you to retrieve all passive URLs of a target domain using the Wayback Machine. Just change the domain name to your target domain. And press enter. As you can see, we now have a list of results for the target domain, including its subdomains. At this point, you can manually search for specific file types like PDF, CSVs, DB files, archive files, and more to identify information disclosure vulnerabilities. However, I'll show you my preferred method for finding these files efficiently. Open your terminal and use this curl one-liner command. Make sure to replace the target domain in the command. For demonstration, I'm using a this domain as proof of concept. The forward slash followed by an asterisk ensures it matches any path under the domain or subdomains, including all pages and resources. This command will download all the passive URLs and save them in an output directory. You can use the do command to check the file sizes in a human-readable format. Once the URLs are downloaded, use this another one-liner command to search for sensitive file names within the output. For instance, it will brief all occurrences of specific file extensions. As you can see, we found numerous results for the specified extensions. You can also search directly from the terminal by typing an extension name and check these URLs one by one. For POC, I'm showing you some URLs. As you can see when I open this URL, it says 404 error. While many people stop here, I'll show you a golden method to retrieve these files. Copy the URL that returned a 404 error. Go to web.archive.org and paste the URL into the search bar. Press enter to see a timeline of when the URL was archived. Select a snapshot date and click on it. As you can see, even though the file is no longer on the website's server, you can still access it from the old archive. Isn't that amazing? Now let's try this with other extensions and URLs. As you can see, it's also showing same 404 error. Now copy this URLs and paste into search bar of Wayback and select archive timeline and snapshot date. As you can see, we can still download it. Cool. Now let's check what inside a zip file and you can see it contains insurance claim templates PDF. Even though the file is unavailable on the server, we still accessed it through an old archive snapshot. Similarly, you might find customer invoice details or other sensitive information, which you can report as P1 high impact vulnerabilities to bug bounty programs. Let's explore a few more examples. As you can see, we can access all the 404 files because they were crawled in the past and archived. This includes various bank insurance claim forms and other sensitive documents. Let's check some more zip files to know we can access others same way or not. This demonstrates that even deleted files from a server can often be accessed via snapshots in the Wayback Machine. Even we use same source to get URLs, but there we can't access that directly. You can also search other extensions directly from the terminal. If you find 404 errors, try searching in the Wayback Machine for archived snapshots and try to access that. Additionally, you can use VirusTotal for similar searches. Just replace the domain to your target domain and it will list all associated URLs. 
Look for files with interesting extensions, and if they result in 404 errors, check the Wayback Machine for old timeline archive. Similarly, you can use Alien Vault to search for URLs and files in the same way. If you found 404 files, just check these on Wayback. I'll add this methodology to our website, lostsec.xyz, so you can easily refer to this recon method. You can use my one-liner command to fast the process for checking these extensions and files. I hope this helps you find information disclosure vulnerabilities more effectively, whether for bug bounty programs or other purposes. This method is also useful for anyone wanting to access deleted files from website servers. That's a wrap for today's video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the exciting content we have coming your way. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.